All right, Olympics are here, and we get to listen to something from Simone Biles today, the, probably the most famous gymnast in the history of our sport in the USA, literally the best gymnast ever, I think, hands down, right here from Houston, Texas, my home city, Simone Biles. What really happened at the Tokyo Olympics? You know, she's been up, she's been down, mostly up her entire career, but the point being, I think she's had her own mental health struggles as any high achieving athlete would. This is why I love this in terms of mental health is to see what it takes to get on top and to stay on top in a highly competitive atmosphere. And especially talking about the Olympics because she is old by Olympic standards, I believe. And let's see what she has to say. Simone Biles, what really happened at the Tokyo Olympics without further ado. To people that, I mean, aren't familiar, yes, yeah. you went to the Tokyo Olympics. You get lost in the air during yeah. your vault, and everyone was shocked. But I'm curious, like, take me to the moment, literally, when you land. You know, the fact that she is in the Olympics here, I haven't followed tons of Olympic coverage. I don't know everything about it, but you know, these Olympics this year in the summer are in Paris. So this must have been the last Olympics that she was able to be in, and I think... If my memory serves me correctly, she left, I think she left maybe the Olympics or didn't keep herself on the team because of some, because of a mental health struggle or because she just didn't feel like she was able to do it. I'm totally guessing here. So I'm literally fine dark, but I think we're going to get to hear what happened here. Something happened in Tokyo where she landed and something didn't go right aren't familiar yes yeah. you went to the tokyo olympics you get lost in the air during yeah. your vault and everyone was shocked wow. but i'm curious like take me to Can't the moment literally when you land on the mat what is going through your mind okay i'll start from the back of the runway okay. when we're standing Let's there go back to the runway so in the back like we already knew my gymnastics was kind of janky like in training I was having twisties already, but I'm trying to push past that. And I would literally tell the team, my teammates, like, I'm fighting demons. Mm. I'm fighting demons right now, but I'm going to do it for you guys. Because, like, <sighs> it was, the cords were not connected. So I literally felt like I was fighting my body and my mind to do these tricks. So we're trying to um, do some different things in the back. Now, this is where EMDR, I don't know how much work she's done on this in terms of of work, peak performance work, and I'm sure she's done tons. She has the best of the best, I'm sure, and everybody who she works with in terms of psychology and in terms of competition. And she's she knows all this probably, but man, when you've got the yips or you've got the tweaks or whatever she's got going on, it is very hard to overcome those mental struggles. And this is important for everybody to hear in life that even the best struggle at times and she's talking about, I have bad stuff happening inside my head, but I'm going to try to fight through it. EMDR does wonders for that in terms of like bilateral stimulation on the brain and trying to really focus on what she can do, what she's there to do and getting the brain to build a positive cognition in there instead of the negative stuff that's there. But in the moment, super impossible. The easiest thing to do with an athlete, which is impossible when you're sitting here in an Olympic competition, is to get your mind in a state where it doesn't matter, to get your mind in a state where the body just performs. The mind gets in a way, it, it steps in front, and all of a sudden it starts questioning. And that's what she's doing a great job here of describing. This is how janky it gets because my mind is telling me one thing, my body knows how to do it, but the mind can stop it at any point. Do these tricks. So we're trying to, um do some different things in the back. And I'm like, okay, I can't do a full and off beam. Can I please go back to my double-double, which is way harder. But I know if I twist more, it's better for me. Wow. So then we go to vault. Vault is feeling a little bit weird in the air. And you can see it. Like, the girls, we ended on floor because we started on vault out there. So we end on floor. I go to do my first pass. And you can see in the air, like, you can ask the girls. It's not like my first pass is a triple-double. And usually when you do it, yeah. you see my regular videos. You see one, you see two, you see three. This one, it looks like I'm going like this in the air and it doesn't feel comfortable. I have no idea where I am, but I'm twisting, like praying, land on my feet. And they're like, that looks jacked up. You can tell all of the gymnasts in mm, there from all of the tell, countries are I like, can't. that's jacked up. That looks jacked up. It looks like she's never done this day in her life, but they know it's a twisty. So people are kind of trying not to watch. We get out there and vault and I was like, okay, it's fine. I warmed up everything. Like it wasn't good, but I did it. 
<laughs> and so we get that out there on vol, and we have a one touch warm up. Go over the table, do a one and a half, and I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what was that? And so I'm like, it's fine, and everybody's freaking out. I don't have another touch, so I have to go stand there until it's my turn to salute and go. Oh, I don't yeah. have another touch. Mm. So the girls and can you like, explain that to people that have no idea what gymnastics? Mm-hmm. Like they're like, what? what yes, do you, what do gymnastics. You once we go out there, we usually have a one touch vault. And it is what it is. It's to warm up. You, you're you're usually sitting in the back for 40, one 45 minutes. It. Come out. You get one turn to take to warm up your vault to perfection. And then you sit there and wait till it's your turn to salute. And, hey, I'm at the Olympics. You know, that's your debut before, you know. Yes. And so we go out there. And I do the one and a half. And my teammates are shook. They're mm. like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm trying to convince myself I'm okay. So I don't need you asking me if I'm okay. No kidding. I'm okay. Listen, I'm okay. We're great. Like, <laughs> everything is not okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. not helping. Literally. And so they're like, you're fine. And I was like, I don't know why I did that. I, I don't know why. And I knew once I got up there, I'm chalking up. We can't put Jordan in yet. I have to go. I have to put up a score. No matter what it is over the table, I have to put up a score. So I'm chalking up, and you can see if you watch the video, I'm like, because I have no idea what I'm going to do when I hit that table. And so in my... This is a scary part. I've worked with some gymnasts, highly competitive gymnasts in the past. Nothing like her, obviously, because there's only one her. The gymnasts I've worked with and talking to coaches, it's, it's a danger. It's a danger to their health. It's a danger to their safety putting gymnasts out there sometimes that are not prepared mentally, uh, physically for sure, but mentally to be able to do a routine, especially on certain uh, events. And I'm sure she's should either talk about that or she, uh, they all know that. If you are up in the air twisting and turning and getting that high and you aren't competent to land on your feet or to land the right way, you can hurt yourself tremendously. So when she talks about this, we all take it for granted because she's amazing at what she does. And it's like, it's, you know, it's like riding a bike. It's no problem. But the reality is if I think the wrong way, I could end up landing on my head and who knows what could happen. It is a dangerous thing from everything. And I never realized that until I talked to the coaches and, and heard them say, this could go really bad, really easy. Because I have no idea what I'm going to do when I hit that table. And so in my head, I'm standing there and I'm like, I'll just do the double pike which I haven't warmed up in like four days. And I'm like, if I do a double pike, over rotate it, it's fine. And then I was like, they put up a score for a two and a half, so I have to do a two and a half. And I'm thinking if I do a double back, that's so dangerous. My coach will kill me. My team will never forgive. And I saluted and I was like, praying to God, because I knew I was going to do a vault, but I didn't know what I was going to do. And I knew I was going to try to do a two and a half, but I didn't know how many twists I was going to make. And I just, <sighs> because I couldn't twist anymore. It's just like your body, your brain opens up, have no idea where you are. So I open, landed like that. And as soon as I land, I kind of grin and I'm like, shit. And I salute and I want to run. If I could have gotten a plane and flown home, I would have mm. done it. But I just, as soon as I landed, I was like, oh, America hates me. No. The world is going to hate me. And I can only see what they're saying on Twitter right now. That's mm. that was my first thought. Simone, I was like, oh, yeah. so much pressure, just so much pressure. It's not even right. Like I know they're expected to perform and to be the best they can, but it it saddens me that one person can feel that much pressure that they have to be something for somebody, or they're going to be picked on, made fun of, mistreated, talked about. Because look. You do the best you can, and every day is not a great day. But she put so much pressure on herself to be this, and this other girl's like, oh, that is so sad. You you just cannot carry the weight of the world like that. I can only see what they're saying on Twitter right now. That's That was my first thought. Simone. I was like, holy shit, what are they going to say about me? Because usually if you go to the Olympics and you flop or whatever it is, everybody on their couch eating those mm. little chips. <laughs> right. It's like you let the country down. Oh, I was. I thought oh, I was going to be banned from America. Because that's what they tell you. Don't come back. If it's not gold, gold or bust, no. don't come back. And I was like, <laughs> I don't. Thanks. Can we just pause also? Like, you yeah. landing and the first thing that you're mm-hmm. thinking should have been, thank God I'm alive. Because yeah. Because you can severely mm-hmm. hurt yourself yes. in those mm-hmm. moments. Yes. And you, understandably, mm-hmm. because this is such an athlete thing, yeah. it's like, 
praise everyone, get ev- get everything for everyone, and yeah. just like sacrifice my mm-hmm. body at all costs. Um, and you land mm-hmm. on the mat, and you're thinking, what is Twitter saying? Yeah, I was like, just a disappointment. No, I'm gonna be one of those videos Failure. flops at the Olympics. Like, yeah. this is it's horrible. And I knew I couldn't recover. And I knew I know how long the twist. You know what's amazing about this with these this level athlete? It's not even about physically being able to do anything. It's not about her handling the moves that she does on any of her events. Once you get that talented, it's the mental piece of when you, when I feel like, and you've seen her, she's killing it at this year's Olympics in Paris. From what I've heard, I haven't seen it, but apparently she is just taking, she's just taking them down. When you're in the zone, when you believe she knows she's going to win, she knows she's going to hit this. She knows she's going to land this. There's nothing stopping her. Mind gets out of the way. The body performs. That's what she does in peak performance. And that's why it takes so many months and years of preparation mentally for high level athletes to be able to hone their skills so much that they're not even thinking anymore. They're just doing. Steve takes to get over, and I know it's not overnight. Can you explain also to people that aren't familiar, what is the twisties? Okay. If- I had to explain it in gymnastics terms. It still might not make sense, but it's basically like your mind and your body is at a disconnect. Your Mm. body is going to try to do something and your mind is going to be like, no, you're not doing this Mm -hmm. work. You're going to open out. You're going to do this. But it's the same as if like the best way I could describe it is every day you drive a car. If one day you woke up and you had no idea how to drive a car, your legs are going crazy. You have no control over your body. That's kind of how it feels like you've been doing something for so long and you now no longer have control. Terrifying. And it's terrifying because we're in a car without any protection. I am my car. Yeah. Like, mm. so I would explain it as like the yips in golf yep. or baseball or whatever it is. I'm not familiar with other sports. So if I'm wrong, correct me. Nope, but that's right. kind of that's kind of how it feels like. So immediately when you mm-hmm. get off the mat, what do you do? I go to tell my coach. And I said, I'm done. I'm not doing anymore. Yeah. Because if I survive that, I don't know how much else I can survive. I think that's smart. That's what I would be saying, too. This is not worth it. You're not worth it. Your health and any permanent damage and injury is not worth it at this point. And y'all, y'all need to know this, just people in general. You don't have to be a high-level gymnast to do this. That when you know you're not in a good mental state, you know you're not ready to perform at your peak, you're not doing the best. It's different than just going to work and kind of making it through the day. It's like, if you're putting yourself in danger in any way, you have to, she's got to know what's best for her in this moment. And what she needs is somebody, she probably needs at this point, somebody to say, yes, you're done. Because for her to say that, most athletes will want to push all the way past and keep fighting. She knows if I got through that, I am blessed beyond measure. So I need to not take any more chances. And I said, I'm done. I'm not doing any more. Because if I survive that, I don't know how much else I can survive. Like, I always say I'm a cat with nine lives, but I think mm. that was my ninth. I'm done. Yeah. And she's like, are you sure? And I was like, yes, are you Jordan, sure? gear up. You're in. You're doing the rest of the meet. I'm not. Like, I can't do it. And are you, like, internally freaking mm-hmm. out, but you're coming off just Internally, like- but I, I, I didn't want to freak out in front of the girls. Got it. So I kept, like, as composed as I could have. And I was like, you guys got this. And then they just went. We went to the back just to get evaluated, like mentally and physically. But we. Man, so this was, you know, this is a big thing when the best one you have is saying, I need to back out. But the sign of a great athlete to me, y'all, is when you decide for the best interest of this team, I need to step out. I need to let somebody else do it because they're going to perform better than I can. Not when I'm on my peak, but the way I am right now is not going to be the best. We also didn't want to. I didn't want to scare the girl, so I was like, can we please go? And there's cameras. All the cameras rush over, and I was just like, because I know what happened, but I also don't know what happened and why it happened. So we just went in the back. The girls are gearing up for bars. I come back out, and I was like, you guys got this. You'll be fine. Trust me. And they were like, no, we can't do this out without you. We're we're not going to win anymore. Da, da, da. They're freaking out because they also know what Twitter's going to say if U.S. doesn't win. And I was like, don't worry about it. You guys are here because you're the best in the world, and you will be. Like, mm-hmm. go out there and do your job. But I think um, it was really hard on them because mentally they lost their best player, mm-hmm. the veteran. Like, I think it was really hard on them. So that's something that I'll never forgive myself for, yeah. for mm. that whole entire experience because 
I wish I could have been in there with them in a way that I was supposed to physically putting up. Well, it's almost better for her to have been in there and competed, not had the yips or the, the twisties or any of those and competed and just missed. Like she did good, but she didn't do good enough. You can take that burden of failure and responsibility. Like, you know, it's on me. I could have performed better than for her to have to stop because that's the ultimate feeling of I have to quit. She shouldn't carry that burden. Like that's why you have alternates and that's why you have other people there to be able to pick up the slack. They're all amazing at this level. They may not be Simone Miles, but she did a great job of pulling them together and trying to get the best out of them she could here. And yeah, she's gonna carry the burden. You know why? Because she's the best there is. Team scores, putting them. But after that, I became their loudest and best cheerleader. That's so good. Um, but I just wish I, it would have been contributing the way that it was supposed to happen. I think that's so hard. When you're an athlete, you understand that moment where you're like, you logically know there was nothing else you could have done. Nothing, but nothing. Your brain is illogical when you're in those moments of course, with yeah. your teammates where you're like, I will literally like die for this team and right now. And that's what I was, that's what I was doing. That's what I was putting myself yeah. through in the back. Yep. And that's why I don't know how I made it that far through warmups through competing. I don't know how I landed on my feet. It's just sheer ability. She makes it through all that. She's just that good. And she's a great example. This is a perfect example of somebody who knows what their limits are. And she pushed them to the point where uh, she did not want to end anything permanently for her. So she knew. And the, the greatest part is she believed enough in her teammates to be able to say, you can actually do better than me at this point. I believe in you. And she went out and she was a cheerleader for him. She didn't walk away. She didn't hide. She didn't crawl away into the locker room. She went back out and cheered for him. That's pretty cool. But for her to have this mental struggle shows how real it is for anybody, that even the best can struggle mentally. And that's why getting help, that's why therapy, that's why especially athletes, peak performance type work is so critical and take time. Don't just go see somebody when you're in a panic. See somebody before that. But this doesn't happen overnight. This is a buildup of something. And she tries to overcome it. She tries to fight. She tries to struggle through it. And sometimes you can't get past it in the moment. In the heat of competition is not the easiest time to overcome this. It's once you get out of it. And I think she proved that because this year she's just being amazing in the Olympics. And I think that's what people don't realize is like, that's not the vault that I was supposed to compete. I had a whole nother full twist that I was supposed to compete. So they're like, oh, she didn't want to lose. And I was like, no, 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 no. I'm not like, my pride is not that big. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. So at that point, it's like, you know what? I need to take care of myself and I need to do what's right for my team. And yeah, I need to let my pride not get in the way and push through this just to compete, to compete at the Olympics again. I need to go Very sit good. down, Very take good. a rest, see what's wrong mentally and let's figure it out, but let's still give my team a chance of medal mm -hmm. contention. Because again, what people also don't realize is if I got hurt on that vault, they couldn't replace me. So if I got hurt- Oh, wow, didn't know that. Since I'm on every event, it's two up, two count. We would have never won a medal. But since Man. what happened, happened, we went to the back. At that point, they could rule it as a mental injury and all of that stuff and physical. We got to put Jordan in. People don't know that. What happened in the back? Did you just try it? Like, what happened? I want more of this. I want more of the conversation. That's it. I can't believe it. Oh, I want to know what happened in the back. Like, what, what was that talk like? And what was, as a therapist, like, that is like bread and butter for me. Like, let's pull this together. Let's all just sit here and talk about kind of what we're going to do next. And let's do this as we're starting all over again. We're just going to start from scratch. We're going to be the best like we are, and we're going to go perform just like we do every single day. Simone Biles, I applaud you. I appreciate you, especially somebody from Houston, Texas, right where I am. And I thank you for being the leader that you are, because whether you're in a company, whether you're in a sport, whether you're in a relationship, whether you're in, you know, a social situation, leaders create more leaders, as Rick Warren said, wannabes just create more followers. And she created another leader and she said, step up, it's time. So that was really cool. I appreciate it. Let me know your feedback. Let me know what you think because this is great mental game in sport and the Olympics are going on right now. It is perfect timing for this. And I really loved hearing this. We'll see you on the next Reaction Therapy. 